I guess any of you are so, I'm super, 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 super excited about this video because this video is my top 10 favorite games of 2013. Woohoo! Cue celebratory music. And these games are my personal favorite games of 2013. They're probably not going to match up with yours, and that's perfectly okay. But just remember to respect my opinion and to have fun watching the video. And of course, I want to know what your top 10 or 15 or 20 or whatever videos of 2013 were. And I'm just going to get started. Number 10 on the list is, this is going to be probably controversial, but Beyond Two Souls. I loved Beyond Two Souls. I'm a huge Quantic Dream fan. I loved Indigo Prophecy, Prophecy and Heavy Rain. I loved Beyond. And I know Beyond's more like a, an interactive movie instead of a game but it was such a compelling story and I just loved watching Ellen Page as Jody and controlling Aiden and just seeing all these incredible performances by Willem Dafoe and Eric Winter and of course Ellen Page and I mean the acting is superb the motion and facial technology is out of this world it's the best use of motion and facial technology of any game I believe I mean it totally totally outshines LA Noir and I know a lot of people didn't like it because it's just basically an interactive movie. You push a button when it tells you to. You move the analog stick to move or to in the combat. You just kind of flick the analog stick in the direction she's aiming. But it's such a compelling story and I love games with great stories. So that's why Beyond Two Souls is number 10. Number 9 on the list is Animal Crossing New Leaf. And this game has taken over my life. And it's just a casual game. It's not really... I mean, I'm not a usual... I don't usually play casual games, okay? But this one is just so addictive. You're just trying to improve your town, get to know your townspeople. You're the mayor of whatever town you cre you decide to name your town. Mine's Alley Cat. But you're the mayor, and you can build different things like a bridge or a fountain. You can create ordinances. It has a day-night cycle, it runs in real time, and it tracks holidays and stuff, which is super cool. And you get your own house, which Tom Nook, urgh, I'm still paying my down payment on my first house. It sucks. But it, it's such a relaxing, calming game. I mean, the music is very soothing, the characters speak in this just gibberish language, but it's adorable. And the game is just beautiful on the 3DS. It really just uses the 3DS's 3D capabilities to great effect. And it's just a really good casual game that it's not too casual, though. I mean, it's not something that will bore you to death. It's just very compelling. You want to play it at least once a day just to see how your town's doing. And I just love it. And I just, you know I just recently got my 3DS, so I'm not very far into the game, but I love it. Number eight on my list is Saints Row 4. Saints Row, Fro yeah. Saints Row 4 does have its flaws, I will admit. But it is a video game, and by that I mean it's truly a video game. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It just wants you to have fun. And for the most part, it is fun. I mean, Insurance Fraud is my favorite mini game, but they bring back Mayhem. They have Professor Genki's, you know, mini games. And they bring back a lot of characters from the previous games, like you know, fun Shondi, and <laughs> you get to, uh, and then, um, what's, ah, uh, can't think of his name, Johnny Gat, Johnny Gat comes back, and you get to use these awesome weapons like the dubstep gun, and the black hole gun, and the alien probing gun that was banned in Australia, and it's just a very silly, fun game. And it has a lot of homages to Metal Gear Solid, Mass Effect, and several other video games like Crackdown. You collect clusters to... You have superpowers, so you collect clusters to upgrade your superpowers. And the story is basically you're the President of the United States, and then just the world is destroyed by the Zen, this alien race, and you're abducted and transported to a virtual steel port, and you have to rescue all your friends, and then you have to defeat... Uh, what's his name? The Le Zinyak. I can't think. Okay. You have to defeat Zinyak. And it's just so much fun. I mean, there, like I said, there's some flaws. Like, you'll know some glitches. And plus, they did basically just 
take steel port from Saints Row the Third and transport to Saints Row the Fourth and say it's virtual. But I mean, it's fun, and you know, mo a lot, there's not a lot of video games out there that are just video games. If you catch my drift, most of them take themselves too seriously, or you know, try to tell a story. Which I love those games, but this one's just a game. It wants you to have fun. It doesn't care if you t if you think it's stupid or whatever. And some parts of it are, but they're so stupid, they're fun, and they're great. And that's what makes Saints Row 4 number 8 on my list. Number 7, which some people are going to have a fit about this, but it's The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. And I just recently got my 3DS. This is my first, this is first Zelda game, so that's why it's not farther down on my list. But I'm really enjoying it. And there's... Oh, the dungeons were very, very difficult, actually. I thought, I didn't think they'd be so difficult, but you really have to figure it out on your own. You have a bunch of different tools, and this is the sequel to A Link uh, to the Past, and this is just stunning. It's gorgeous on the 3DS, gorgeous, and it's just, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, if you've played Legend of Zelda games before, I'm sure you're familiar with it, and if you played A Link to the Past, I've heard it's very very similar so I mean I've heard like the dungeons are basically the same and all that but the, it's just improved and the story's different but you know it's just fun to go and explore and you know find different dungeons and do the different quests and you know for my first Zelda game this is actually a pretty good choice I think and I love the new mechanic of how you can become a painting and travel cr across the walls and I love figuring out the pu the dungeons, really tricky puzzles. So some, I'm, I've cursed because of it, but I mean, it's fun to figure it out, and it's so rewarding. And it's definitely a must buy if you have a 3DS and if you're a Zelda fan, of course. So that's number seven on my list. Number six, and a lot of people had just a uh, fit over this, but it's DMC Don't Make Cry, and it's the reboot made by Ninja, Nin, uh, Ninja Theory, yeah. And it's just, this game is awesome. I've played every single Devil May Cry, why my voice crack? Devil May Cry game before, loved them all, and I love this. It's gorgeous, I love, it's basically an origin story, okay? That's why his hair is not white. It's an origin story. And, I mean, it's great. The story's great, and the characters are well fleshed out. The voice acting is superb. Gorgeous game, like I said. There's really inventive boss fights because, you know, the Devil May Cry series has really over-the-top boss fights, and that doesn't change in this game. And they've added really, really good platforming segments to this game. And, you know, there's a lot of, like, just combinations you have to remember, like, how to use the grapple hook, how to, you know, dash in the air, whatever. But once you get, once you memorize those controls, you're just golden and you're having fun with the game. And it's just a whirlwind of fun and beauty and over-the-topness and uh, I just can't explain it. It's just a great Devil May Cry game. And just don't pay attention to the fact that he's kind of emo and has different hair. It's still Dante. It's an origin story. And, I mean, you can see Virgil, too. And there's a new character, Cat, who plays Dante's kind of love interest. And there's Mundus, and it's just phenomenal. And one of the best boss fights ever is the Bob Barbus boss fight, which a lot of people also had a fit about because it's Boost Bill O'Reilly. But, <laughs> I mean, if you like the Devil May Cry series, you owe, you owe it to yourself to play this, okay? Just get over the fact that he's a little bit different in this game. If you like hack and slash games, definitely play this. If you haven't played any Devil May Cry games before, just pick this one up because I'm, the old, the first three are superb, but they are dated. The fourth one is kind of, eh, it's not as great as the first three, and it's not as great as this one, but it's still a good game. But overall, I love this game. It's one of my top, that's why it's, a lost count. Oh my gosh, math is hard. Oh, six. This is why it's number six on my countdown, okay? By now you should know I'm terrible at math. But, yeah, it's great. Hack and Slash, it's a great just action-adventure game. And I don't think it got the attention it deserved. Positive attention. It got a lot of negative attention. And number five on my list is Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, which is a downloadable game. And 
it's just such a superb game. It's only two to three hours long, and it was created by Starbreeze, who created the Chronicles of Riddick and the first Darkness game, and Jess Affairs, a Swedish filmmaker, directed it. And it's a story about two young brothers who their mother has died, their father is sick, so they have to go on this quest to find this magical water that will heal the father. And it's only a two to three hour game, so and it doesn't have a lot of replayability, but the story is so emotional and so tense and uh it's just such a fantastic game. The controls are a little wonky, like a like big brother is controlled with left thumbstick, left trigger, little brother is right thumbstick, right trigger. My advice is if you've played the game, keep big keep big brother on the left, keep little brother on the right. That way it's easier to know which controls to use. But it's such a great game. No puzzle is ever repeated and the puzzles aren't fr too frustrating. You're not going to pull your hair out and scream and cuss because of the puzzles. They're pretty simple. But I mean the story in the game is so great and like I've said before in previous videos, this game does not have any spoken dialogue. It has its own language, but you understand what they're saying. It's really weird, but you know what they're saying. And, but the major plot twist in Brothers and Tale of Two Sons is just so shocking. And if you're the emotional top, you will cry. But I definitely recommend downloading this game, giving it your two to three hours of free time, and just experiencing the magic that is Brothers. And number four on the list is Grand Theft Auto V. This game blew my expectations out of the water, which my expectations were pretty low because I absolutely hated Grand Theft Auto IV. But Grand Theft Auto V has improved on all the flaws of the previous game. And it's just such a huge world. There's three different characters you can control. And most of the time you can swap between them freely unless it's like a mission where the game is telling you to be Franklin or Trevor or Michael and each of them has their own story and they all have their own side missions that are unique to their character and you can spend just hours in this world just driving around doing random events meeting strangers and freaks and going shopping, getting, getting tattoos, going scuba diving, doing yoga, playing tennis it goes on and on and it's a near perfect recreation of Los Angeles. Los Santos in this game is gorgeous and it's just one of the just masterpieces of this generation. I mean, Rockstar really pushed the Xbox 360 and the PS3 to its limits with the graphics. I never ever noticed texture pop in or anything like that or frame rate glitches or drops or anything like that. Some people have said they have, but I never noticed anything. Now, I will say the flying is terrible in this game, but overall the missions are pretty fun. I mean some missions are kinda like oh, I don't wanna do this but the great thing about this game is like Red Dead Redemption they include the option where you can skip a mission if you're stuck on it which is fantastic. I know it might be considered cheating but really I skipped the flying missions because I cannot fly planes. Okay quit shoehorning plane sections into games that don't that aren't focused on flying. Other than that though <laughs> I loved Grand Theft Auto 5 I love the story and I love the side missions and it easily takes at least 40 hours to complete the main storyline and most of the side quests. But uh, after that you can still do GTA Online, you can finish up the side quest or you know the random encounters or you can go scuba diving to find treasures. And there's so many easter eggs in this game, it's just it's phenomenal and a lot of people say this is overhyped. and. I do agree that a lot of people think this game is the best game that has ever descended from the heavens, but, you know, it's a good game, and I'm not going to say it's terrible because, you know, everyone's saying, oh, it's the best game ever. I'm not going to be like, oh, it's terrible, it's crap, don't play it, because I do recommend it if you haven't played it and if you're old enough to play it. And, I mean, even if you hated Grand Theft Auto 4, you'll probably like Grand Theft Auto 5 because it's really improved on everything Grand Theft Auto, 5, Grand Theft Auto 4 did wrong. So that's why this is number four on my list. Number three is Tomb Raider. And you know by now I'm a huge Tomb Raider fan. I've played every single Tomb Raider game. And this is phenomenal. At first I wasn't sure how Crystal Dynamics was going to reboot such an iconic character. But they did it beautifully. And she is shown as being very weak in this game. But I mean this is her origin story. This is about her first becoming the Tomb Raider. And it's... A beautiful game and basically 
you're on a cruise with your friends, and you're going to this island, and you're trying to research Queen Himiko. I think that's how you say her name. I haven't played this game since it was released, but it's just a great game. It's beautiful. You get shipwrecked on the island. There's a curse. You lose your friends, so you have to go and find your friends. There's a lot of shocking plot twists in the game, and everyone complained about there being a rape scene, okay? There's no rape scene in this game, okay? No rape scene. And it's just a great game. I mean, even her iconic pistols make a debut in the game, and it's really cool that you can go to a campfire and upgrade your weapons and abilities, and the world itself is just gorgeous. It's kind of an open world. It's not really, but I mean, you can go and explore different parts of the world, and if you want to go back and explore an area and 100% the area you can at any time, just go to a campfire and it'll fast travel you there, which is kind of unrealistic, but, you know, games today. But it's such a great game, great story. Camilla Ludington did an amazing job as Lara Croft, and I can't wait for the sequel that they have already confirmed is coming to next-gen consoles. They don't have a release date for it, but... If you haven't played the new Tomb Raider, definitely check it out because it's, it, I would say play this over the older games first because the older games, even though they're great, they are dated, they have flaws, and if you've never played a Tomb Raider game, you owe it to yourself to see why Lara Croft is such an icon and I uh, just can't give enough praise to this game. This game is phenomenal and there are tombs in this game, even though you're on an island. The tombs are kind of just like a side quest. But they're so much fun to play, and they incorporate physics puzzles, but once you complete the puzzles, you get rewarded with treasure. And finding the treasure is really cool, because it t like each time you find treasure, you get a little backstory about it. And uh, this game is just phenomenal. Number, number two on my list is the Bioshock Infinite, and this is a phenomenal game. And, I mean, it took about five years for them to create this game. But it's superb. And a lot of people are like, how is this a Bioshock game? It's not in Rapture. There's no big daddies. Blah, 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 blah. But even though it is set in Columbia, you quickly, well, at the end of the game, you'll learn how it ties into Rapture. I'm not going to spoil it. But basically the story is you're playing as Booker DeWitt. And he's given this note that says, bring us the girl and pay back the debt. So he goes to Columbia. And he's dropped off by the Lutest Twins. And the first hour of the game is just spent exploring Columbia, seeing the beautiful sights. It's truly a gorgeous, gorgeous town or, you know, city or whatever you want to call it. But, I mean, it's a floating city in the sky. But you quickly learn the dark side of Columbia. And you learn about Father Comstock, who is just ruling over this land with an iron fist. And you quickly discover that the girl you're supposed to bring is Elizabeth, who is locked in a tower, kind of like Rapunzel. And once you help her escape, you learn she has this ability to open tears, which, you know, she can pull out med medical kits or ammo or, you know, a sentry turret or whatever out of the uh, tears. And even though a lot of people, Songbird was touted a lot in, like, the promotional campaigns and stuff. Songbird's not an enemy. He's just a part of the story. And... The story itself is phenomenal. I mean, it is very confusing, and you really have to think about it before it truly hits you what is really happening. But once you understand what the story is about, you're just like, <sighs> mind blown. And it's just, oh, it's such an awesome game. The characters are phenomenal. Booker, Elizabeth, Daisy, Fit Fitzroy, Comstock, the Lutest twins, all very well written, all well acted. And... Even though the final battle in the game is very, very weak, it's one of the worst parts, of the, it's the worst part of the game, and it just feels shoehorned in. But other than that, this is a phenomenal game that definitely deserves to be played, even if you haven't played the previous Bioshocks. This is a great game. Just play it, okay? Great game, great story, uh, your mind will be blown, your eyes will be crying with joy because they're seeing this beautiful city on the screen and experiencing this just beautiful, beautiful game. Play it. Love it. Caress it. Huh. Okay. Loving of Bioshock Given is over. And number one. Bum dum 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 dum. Drum roll. I can't do drum rolls. Last of Us. You probably saw this coming. I'm a huge Naughty Dog fangirl. 
and Night Dog blew this game out of the park. And a lot of people were thinking, oh, this is going to be Uncharted with Zombies. And, you know, I didn't really know what to expect from this game, but this is truly a survival horror game. And you're playing as Joel, who is voiced by Troy Baker, who voiced Booker DeWitt in Bioshock Infinite. But he has to take this girl, Ellie, who is voiced by Ashley Johnson. They both did a phenomenal job with their acting and motion capture. And he has to take her to this group called the Fireflies. And along their way, they come across different allies and companions. And they come across three different types of, types of zombies, if you can call them zombies. And they also come across a lot of hostile uh, enemies. But this game is gorgeous. If you thought Uncharted was gorgeous, this game just blows it out of the water. Even though this is post-apocalyptic, it's just, oh, Naughty Dog, you did it again. And it is a pretty difficult game, even on the easy setting. It's difficult. You will die a lot. But, and resources are very scarce. But that is what would actually happen if the apocalypse ever came. You know, resources would be scarce. People would become hostile. You know, I don't know about the zombie part, but it's just, it's amazing. And it is a very lengthy game. It goes through an entire year. You go through every season. And the winter season is very, very, very shocking. And a lot of people did not like the winter season. I thought it was very effective. And the whole story is just mind-blowingly just fantastic. And... A lot of people are like, we want to see a sequel to Last of Us. And I don't want to see a sequel if it has Joel and Ellie in it. I think their story is completed. Now, I wouldn't mind seeing a sequel with a different set of characters in the same world. But I think Joel and Ellie's story is completed. But this is definitely a game to experience if you haven't played it yet. And if you like action-adventure games, survival horror games, you know, or games with a really good emotional story, definitely try out The Last of Us. And if you like Naughty Dog, especially, pick it up because it's not a disappointment at all. None of this disappointed me. And even though sometimes the AI was a little wonky, this game is near perfection. So those are my top 10 games of 2013. Comment down below and let me know what yours were. And li like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more epic videos of epic geekiness. Favorite the video so your friends and family can see. Share me wherever you want to because I like to be shared, but as long as it's fair use. And I love each and every one of you. Peace and kisses. Bye.